So I just got done editing this and I don't think I actually reviewed it. I think I just talked about it and what happens and what I found stupid and funny and um, enjoyable. So it's not really a review. It's more of a, um, here's what happened. So if you have not read these and you don't want to know what happens, probably don't watch this. Read them, come back. Um, but also make sure you check, check trigger warnings. Um... There were some things, I forgot to mention this, there were some things that happened in book one that were kind of um, a little graphic and um, it shocked me a little bit. Um, I know it's a dark romance and there is a trigger warning in the beginning of each book, I think, but um, it did still shock me a little bit. Um, so yeah, but if you continue to watch, thank you. Hello, 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 how are you? I'm Julia, and for this video I'm going to be talking about the Deception Trilogy by Rena Kent. I know everyone who reads her reads her Deviant King series, but I saw this on Amazon and I was like, that sounds interesting. So I bought all three of them and uh, yeah, so I'm going to review it really quickly. I um, am going on a road trip tomorrow with my mom. So I thought I would film these really quickly because I don't have to work. So, and I just, I, weird thing about my head. Um, I finished one of my standalones and I can't not, I can't be in the middle of a, of a book and film a video because my head can't do it. I don't know why it just doesn't happen. So I just filmed a standalone video. Um, it's probably already up. You can watch it if you want to. I'll link it. I think my dog's waking up, so that's nice. Um, so, the first book, I'm just gonna start. The first book in this is called Dark Deception, and I don't think you really need to buy it. I think there's like one extra chapter, but everything else is the, like, the beginning of the first book, which is Vow of Deception. I gave this three stars on Goodreads. It's very confusing. I don't really like either character in this, but I was very intrigued by what was going on um, because it is very confusing. You're very confused. <laughs> I was very confused. Take a shot every time I say confused. Yeah, my dog's awake. I'll be back. So, <laughs> I'm back. Um, this follows Adrian and Winter. And Adrian, he is like a crime boss. And basically, we start off following Winter. She's living in a homeless shelter. She has lost her child, um, her pregnancy. And because of that, she's become an alcoholic and one day she is at this homeless shelter and like the leader i guess i'm not really sure what they're called um he owns the shelter i'm not sure um he sexually assaults her and she like punches him or something and she leaves and then she finds out later that he has been murdered and so thus the story begins Adrian runs into Winter and she's looking at a poster. We don't know that it's Adrian, but um, he basically picks her up one day. Uh, she's like living in, she goes into like a, like a, why can I not think of the word? I hate this about myself. A car garage, a garage. She goes into a garage. Like one of those huge garages, I don't know. She goes in there to stay warm. I can't remember, I why can I not? It's a car garage. Why do I think there's a different name? I don't know. She goes in there to stay warm and basically his men grab her. He takes her into the limo or the car or whatever and he's like, listen, you look exactly like my dead wife. I haven't told anyone that she's dead. I need you to be her. And she's like, no, thank you. I'm very happy with how I'm living. And he's like, no, like, you have no choice. The homeless owner dude, his name is Richard, and he's like, I killed Richard, and I can pin it on you. 
unless you become my wife. And she's like, oh shit, okay. So they start their relationship. And he's like teaching her all of these things about um, the, like, he's like number two or something. I can't remember. There's like a couple men above him, but he's pretty high up. And she has to learn all of their names and their wives' names and how he works and what he does. And he bas he basically does, like, the computer technology stuff for them. And he's basically keeping her prisoner. And he's calling her Leah because that is his wife's name. And she's like, my name is not Leah, my name is Winter. He's like, your name is Leah. And she's like, no, it's not, it's Winter. And it's an argument, and it's so confusing. I was so confused this entire book. And you don't even find out what's going on in this one. So, basically, they're just like, she's starting to fall in love with him. And she's like, I have absolutely no idea why I'm in love with this man. And she's also Larry, who is a friend of hers in the homeless shelter. Um, he has disappeared off the face of the earth. She's like, where did Larry go? Winter slash Leah, you know where Larry is. Put your head together. Um, I will say, I this is something that I was like, I don't know. Usually I'm pretty good with like twists and turns and I'm like, oh, I can figure that out. I could not figure out what was going on. I was like, I don't know. I'm confused. I don't get it. And then you you don't even find out. She just, um, how does this end? Oh, there's a guy. There's a guy. She's friends with this dude from childhood. And he is like, something happens at this party, like, She's grabbed and taken into the limo, into this limo, and he's driving. He's like, you know who I am. She's like, no, I don't. And she, he, like, shoots the guy that grabs her and shoots, um, oh my god, I can't remember anyone's name ever. Yan. Yan. He shoots Yan, who she's really good friends with. Like, he's protecting her. He's, like, basically her main bodyguard adrian hates it because he's an insecure jealous little man and it ends with her being like oh my god i am leah volkov so that's how that ends and you're still just like what is what's happening so i gave this three stars but i will give it to her i am intrigued i am wondering what's gonna happen next i am wondering why I, am, I have so many questions. So I jumped not into the second book, into the third book. And I was like 80 pages in before I realized that I should not be reading the third book. I should be reading the second book. Because the third book starts off at the end of the first book. So the second book, which is Tempted by Deception. Let me get, let me get to it. Hold on one second. I gave another three stars. And I said, these are terrible, but I'm so invested. So this, we jump backwards. And we get the beginning of Adrian and Leah's story. Leah, she is a ballerina. She is just, and she's doing very well for herself. She's a ballerina. And she is, she's almost about to be a principal, or she is a principal. I can't remember, but... Basically, she's seeing him, and there's this chick who is jealous of her. Think, does anyone remember the movie Red Sparrow with Jennifer Lawrence? And she's in this, like, she's a ballerina, and the dude jumps on her calf and breaks it in half. That's what happens in this book, and her career is over. It's actually very sad, <laughs> but... She's with Adrian, and he kind of, she's like, basically she sees him kill a man, and she's like, oh my god, I promise I'll not say anything. And he's like, mm -hmm. So he keeps checking up on her, and then he is in her apartment, and then they start sleeping together. And he basically baby traps her, because she gets pregnant, 
but that's after she breaks her leg um so it's very dramatic and it's very it's awful he's awful and he is like forces her into this marriage and as all this is happening she's talking to the dude who shot Yan I cannot remember his name and Adrian is like are you gonna like tell me what's going on with this guy because he thinks that she's cheating I can't remember his name I don't really care so she's like her buddy is like I need you to help me kill him she's like I don't want to do that because she loves him but then he forces her into the marriage and he gets her pregnant and she's at the wedding is like Oh yeah, I'm gonna help him. I'm gonna help him kill Adrian. And so that happens. She doesn't actually end up doing it. She kind of just like backs off and is like, I'm living for my child. But then she's like, I need more freedom in this relationship, Adrian. And he's like, I don't really trust you. And she's like, please. So she's had her kid, Jeremy which is, I think, is a terrible name, but whatever. <laughs> um, and I can't remember, there, I can't remember, like, what his, if he's, like, Italian or, like, Greek or something, I can't remember, but it's not a very good name. His name's Adrian, and I guess Adrian isn't a very good name. Anyway, she has a kid, and she's, like, I just, she tries to escape, because he's, like, switching the camera, so she's, like, I want to escape. She doesn't do a very good job of it. So, a couple of weeks later, she's like, I just need more freedom. I need to get out of this house. I'm going stir crazy, please. There's a homeless shelter. Can I just work there? And he's like, yeah, because he knows the dude who owns the homeless shelter. And he's like, I'm not going to tell anyone. Or no, that's when she's winter. So there she goes to the bathroom. It's been a couple of weeks and Jan is looking over her and she's like, I just got to pee. She goes in the bathroom there's winter and they look exactly alike double gangers and she's like <laughs> she's like oh my god how would you feel about switching with me because that's not gonna turn out badly and winter is like hell yeah i would love a rich husband why not and leah's like okay next week and then after that, I'm going to come get my son. Adrian, who's actually in love with Leah. Like, is he an asshole? Yes, but he loves her. <sighs> She's like, Winter shows up. And he knows instantly. He's like, that is not my wife. He's like, who is you? And she's like, I'm Leah. And he's like, no, you're not. And she's like, yes, I am. And he's like, no, you're not. And he pulls out a gun. And she's like, oh, my God. <laughs> she's like please don't kill me she asked me to switch with her and then they go running after leah and she's running through the woods <clears throat> and she gets to a cliff and she jumps and she had actually like jumped she tried to kill herself earlier in this book because of her leg which was very sad and he like took her off the edge because she had to jump off of the hospital because she wasn't like suicidal or anything so I guess they wouldn't have her on like watch but like I still think I've never seen a hospital that have like windows that open or like a balcony maybe I'm poor I am poor but like I've never seen that I don't know um so she jumps off of the cliff and when she wakes up, she remembers nothing. She thinks she's winter. So, this is where we start. Consumed by deception. Which we get... Which I was a little confused, I will say. I was a little confused about how we were starting because... <clears throat> I didn't know. I missed the end of book two and I started book three I was like why what is she doing in the hospital because I didn't know what was going on also while in vow of deception which was kind of creepy I was like what the fuck what is that what is happening there 
she's like she'll sit in the yard and there's like a they have like a guest house and she'll look up in this window and she's like i see this woman in a white gown looking at me and it's winter and she's like that's so freaky that's weird so she does some investigating and winter is pretending to be in a coma it's so funny um but we start this off and we do get like a little bit of adrian's childhood and it's very sad and very depressing but uh yeah so we start off where we left off which is at the end of book one leah is talking to the dude and adrian comes around because she took their son to the park and the clowns come and she gets whisked away and then he finds her with the dude and he's like dude you're cheating on me which is what she was saying in the beginning she's like yeah i cheated on you to get him like not love her or something i don't know which it just pissed him off it didn't really like take away his love um and then they kind of like start their relationship over and I actually really, I like this one. I gave it five, four stars. I think I gave it five stars. Give it four stars. And I really liked it. It, because we know all the secrets and we know what's going on. And nothing really happens, but it was interesting. I was interested. And it's very lovey-dovey. Like, this is what I like. Like, it's not, it is. It's still, like, domestic shit. But, like, in a nice way. Does that make sense? So... I really liked this one actually um it was nice and i liked it i don't know what else to say about it jeremy's cute there's a lot it's very dramatic and very unnecessary cliche and cheesy but i think that's what makes some things fun like i love a good protective husband and there's also drama with like hit the leader of the mafia or whatever and he like almost dies and Leah's like, we can save him. And they save him and it was nice. So I don't know. It just it's very dramatic. Is it the best thing I've ever read? No. Like, it was just fun. And it kept me intrigued. And I was asking like I was like asking all the questions. I was like, what is going on? How is this gonna end? And that's what I like. I like to be kept on my toes. So all in all. These were fun reads, and I think you should read them. Uh, yeah, so that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Please comment, like, and subscribe. All that jazz. I will have all of my social, oh, social medias linked down below. If you would follow those, I would greatly appreciate it. Um, and that's it. So thank you again for watching. I'll see you next time. <laughs> Bye!